Hello students and welcome back. Today we're going to learn about expressing emotion. We're going to start today by looking at some faces. I want you to tell me which emotion are they expressing? Let's see how you did. The first face was anger. The next face, fear. Following that, disgust. Surprise, happy, sad. How did you do? Carol Izzard suggested that there are 10 basic emotions evident at birth. You can see them in the images here. So the ones not displayed are contempt, shame, and guilt. So we have joy, anger, interest, disgust, surprise, sadness, and fear. Cultural and emotional expression. Are there universally recognized emotions? So there seem to be some universally understood facial expressions. People of various cultures agree on the emotional labels for the expressions on the faces on the right. And people in other studies did have more accuracy judging emotions from their own culture. So which one in the first row is closer to joy? Which one in the second row is sad? Which one in the last row is angry? Universal emotions. So these are common across all cultures, distinguished by facial features. We're gonna watch a short video about whether or not they're learned or inborn now. And the last one is emojis. Do cultures view emojis in the same way? So I want you to go to this website, read a little bit about it, and then you're gonna answer a question when you come back. Emotion and the brain. The first structure I'd like to discuss is the amygdala. So when the amygdala is removed from the brain, the individual acts tame and calm. They have no response to fear. However, when this area of the brain is stimulated, they become aggressive. So autism correlates to an underdevelopment of the amygdala. The cingulate cortex, this is a structure we haven't discussed yet, but there's a link between the amygdala and other subcortical structures. Emotional quality of pain is often processed here. High activation of the cingulate cortex can lead to worry, anxiety, and catastrophizing, which is fear. Like basically catastrophizing is when you take something small and you kind of blow it out of proportion. The basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is associated with recognizing disgust and damage results in the reduction of emotional intensity, how strongly you uh, experience emotions. The left hemisphere is more active with positive emotions and the right hemisphere is more active with negative emotions. We're gonna watch a short video about emotion and the brain now. Cultural influence on emotions. So we have different uh, categories of emotions and these vary across culture. Uh, for example, Tahitians don't have a word for sadness. How might this impact their interpretations of feeling down? There's a cultural influence on the primary emotional states that we have. For example, shame is not something that is in, expressed publicly, it's more expressed privately. And shame can be a very strong motivator in collectivistic cultures or more Eastern-based cultures. Cultural, culture also influences our cultural norms about how we display emotion. So for example, uh, display rules are when and how a person should display an emotion. For example, males kissing uh, each other on the cheeks during a greeting, not so common in Western cultures, uh, especially in the United States, but it is common in European cultures and Eastern cultures as well. A great example of this is the New Zealand warrior dance known as the haka, which we're going to watch now. Facial and behavioral feedback. So this is the idea that uh, em emotional expression is self-reinforcing. And what I mean by that is that when we smile, we tend to be a little bit happier than if we're frowning. And the same with our body language and posture as well. That's the behavior feedback. 
We're going to watch a short video about this right now. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I have for you today. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic day.